Pioneer's DMH2660 next has almost everything that the DMH1500 next didn't have, and I suggest that you give it some serious consideration when upgrading. Not to mention, it has one of the fastest operating systems on any stereo I've ever filmed. This stereo boasts a 6.8 inch capacitive touchscreen display, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Amazon Alexa, Bluetooth, USB, HD radio, and web link. Stay tuned for our full audio testing at the end of this video. Inside the box is a wiring harness, wireless remote control, USB extension, external microphone for voice recognition, mounting hardware, warranty card, instruction and installation manuals. And seven inch double din stereo. The rear connections in the back include Bluetooth microphone, steering wheel control, Sirius XM, iDataLink Maestro, USB, auxiliary, wiring harness for power ground and speaker, three sets of four volt preamp outputs for front, rear, and subwoofer, backup camera, RCA AV inputs, video outputs, and radio antenna. The yellow RCA video inputs can also be used as front camera. This is possible with the source control in the settings. The stereo 6.8 inch capacitive touchscreen looks solid, but it's still not HD. Pioneer is reserving that for their top line next models, coming out hopefully this year. But who knows with that Corona. However, the display was very responsive and going through menus was incredibly fast for a stereo. The display has a resolution of 800 by 480 pixels. Again, this is a digital media receiver, so no DVDs or CDs. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are two of the most highly demanded features in car stereos today. Both integrate several of your smartphone's first party and third party audio, messaging, and navigation apps. Video apps do not transfer, so no YouTube, no Netflix, no HBO, and this stereo is not compatible with wireless Apple CarPlay or wireless Android Auto, and you cannot add them. For some reason, Pioneer is still in cahoots with Weblink. Weblink is a portal to apps like YouTube, Yelp, Music, and Weather, all displayed and controlled at the stereo. It's not a screen mirror. It works with iOS and Android via a USB connection, but it is horribly slow. And if I had this radio, I would never use it. But seriously, you'll put Weblink in your stereos, but not an HD screen? Why, Pioneer? We can't even get an HDMI input. Amazon Alexa is an interesting new addition to the next line and is something we've already seen on Kenwood models. I personally have an Alexa at my house and can see myself potentially using it on this stereo to set alarms and whatnot. Bluetooth is a necessity for hands-free calling and music streaming with music tags. Music playback is also possible via a USB connection with either Spotify, Pandora, or iPod sources. USB also provides album artwork and a charge to your device. Album artwork is possible via Bluetooth, but not in the Bluetooth source. You must be connected via Bluetooth and streaming wirelessly, but in the iPod or Spotify source for the album art to come up. Expand the radio even further with the iDentaLink Maestro RR for a seamless interface with your factory system for features like climate control, vehicle information, tire pressure, gauges, performance, satellite radio, USB, radar, and parking assist. The stereo is Sirius XM ready with the SXV300 V1 and steering wheel control ready with the Axis ASWC1. Links in the bio for both. The DMH2660 Next does not have an HDMI port, 
However, I was able to easily mirror either an iPhone or Android to it using its RCA AV inputs with a few adapters. Audio and video both transfer. Controls still need to be done at the phone. We have extensive videos on mirroring, as well as mirroring kits for both Android and iPhone. Links for all of this in the bio below. Make sure you turn the AV source on in the system settings. The stereo's audio settings put you in full control of your sound. Using USB thumb drives, the stereo is compatible with MP3, WMA, AAC, WAV, and FLAC audio files. And for video, it plays MPEG-1, MPEG-2, AVI, and WMV files. You can also upload and view JPEG images. As promised, let's test this stereo's audio performance. The first test we ran was two channels driven at 4 ohms, 14.4 volts, 40 hertz. At volume 38, our HP 8903B audio analyzer picked up 21.90 watts RMS. The audio precision read 1.52% distortion into 9.27 volts of outputs. Let's do a left and right channel swap. Our AMM1 read 18 watts. We got 9.33 volts on the Lumi, and we drew 5.22 amps of current. Two channels, 14.4 volts, 1 kilohertz, 4 ohms, volume 37. Our HP picked up 18.19 watts RMS. The audio precision read 0.08% distortion and 8.45 volts of output. Let's switch channels left and right. Our AMM1 read 13 watts RMS, and we got 8.47 volts on the Lumi and we drew 4.68 amps of current. Down to single channel driven, 14.4 volts, 4 ohms, 1 kilohertz, at volume 38, our HP picked up 22.52 watts RMS, the audio precision by 1.18% distortion, and 9.4 volts of output. Our AMM1 read 16 watts RMS. We got 9.44 volts on the Lumi, and we drew 3.11 amps of current. Single channel driven, 14.4 volts, 4 ohm, 40 hertz, at volume 38. Our HP picked up 22 watts RMS. The audio precision read 0.88% distortion, 9.3 volts of output. Our AMM1 read 19 watts RMS. We got 9.35 volts on the Lumi, and we drew 3.18 amps of current. Two channels driven, 14.4 volts, going to 2 ohms, 40 hertz. At volume 38, our HP picked up 33.5 watts RMS. The audio precision read 1.2% distortion and 8.11 volts of output. Channel swap between left and right. Our AMM1 read 28 watts RMS. We got 8.13 volts on the Lumi, and we drew 8.34 amps of current. Two channels driven, 14.4 volts, 2 ohms, 1 kilohertz. At volume 37, our HP picked up 34.3 watts RMS. The audio precision read 1.3% distortion and 8.19 volts of outputs. Switch between left and right channels. Our AMM1 read 24 watts. We got 8.15 volts on the Lumi and we drew 8.2 amps of current. Back to single channel, 14.4 volts, 2 ohms, 1 kilohertz, at volume 37. Our HP picked up 34.61 watts RMS. The audio precision read 0.55% distortion and 8.24 volts of output. Our AMM1 read 25 watts RMS. We got 8.26 volts on the Lumi and we drew 4.66 amps of current. Single channel driven, 14.4 volts, 2 ohms, 40 hertz, at volume 37, our HP picked up 33.78 watts RMS. 
with the audio precision rate 0.3% distortion and 8.15 volts of output. Our AMM1 read 29 watts RMS. We got 8.17 volts on the Lumi and we drew 4.75 amps of current. Next up, we tested the RCA preamp output voltage at volume 40, left channel 40 hertz. We got 3.35 volts with 0.134% distortion. Right channel, we got 3.38 volts with 0.135% distortion. At one kilohertz, left channel, we got 3.53 volts with 0.028% distortion. Right channel, we got 3.56 volts with 0.27% distortion. Our final test was on frequency response using the preamp outputs. It was a bit bumpy after 1 kHz, then fell off a cliff at 25 kHz, but still within 1 dB. All tests were done with a flat EQ. Would you take a chance on the Pioneer DMH 2660 next? Be sure to get all of your car audio and video gear with us today at qualitymobilevideo.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new. Click that like button, join the conversation below, join the conversation below, and thanks for watching.